What is up everyone? Noel Walsh in the house. Gunslinger, conquer what you chase. Today is the last day of the month, the month of May. I always had great months in May. May was my best month ever. I did 37 in 2014. That was right before we decided to make the trip out here. I was speaking at a conference in Las Vegas in July. So we made a family trip two weeks to St. George, Utah. Zion National Park, all the Red Rock. If you don't know who I am, why I call myself the gunslinger, know what NWNA is, know what conquer what you chase means, I apologize. That means you don't know me. And I was talking to my good friend Ben Gay the other day, just about a week and a half ago, and he said people need to know you. People need to know your story. People need to know who you are, what you're about. So let me give you a little background about myself, okay? So I've been in the car business for 18 years. I, uh, through high school, being a younger child, a younger kid in that, growing up an adolescent, I worked in the prep department, the wash rack, both where my stepfather was a service manager at a Chrysler dealership in Twin Falls, Idaho, and also in a Ford dealership, Briarwood Ford in Saline, Michigan. And so I traveled back and forth. Uh, we would uh, live with my mom in Twin Falls, Idaho, come out to Michigan every summer. I was known as the kid from Idaho with the ceramic Easton bat, okay? So I had a name for myself back then. It wasn't Gunslinger. But I worked 18 years in dealerships. 16 of those years I sold. I sold 3,000 cars and made $2 million in commission. The reason I always communicate this to everybody is because it can be done. And towards the end, I was making $190,000 selling cars and probably applying myself at 50%. So I think back, if I applied myself, I wasn't starting NWNA. I wasn't uh, living a more open, free, fun life. I could have easily made $300,000 plus a year. This business has that opportunity. You need to realize that. When you're in any kind of sales, any kind of retail, but especially car sales, that's my background, you need to realize the potential that lies ahead for you. I know guys that sell 60, 70 cars a month that make 200, 250, $300,000 plus a year all over the country at different stores, small stores, big stores, domestic, imports, highline, luxury, whatever the case is, they're making money. So the car business has that to offer. In my time, my last 20 months in sales, I traveled when we moved to St. George, Utah in September of 2014. I traveled to Ann Arbor, Michigan and sold cars the last two weeks of the month. I did this until March of 2016. I was still selling 15 to 25 cars a month and last year I made $150,000 selling cars. Once again, I want you to know I worked 25 weeks last year and made $150,000 selling cars. That's because I built a thick client base. I built a clientele that loved me. There's 12 A's to influence in life and the 12th A is addiction. I got my customers to that level of addiction, where they were addicted to the service I would give them. They were addicted to the process I had. They were addicted to the feeling that I gave them when they came in, and they were addicted to buying a new Ford or a used vehicle off Noel Walsh at Varsity Ford. This is what you need to create with your customers. You need to put them first. You need to step yourself up again. You need to act mature. You need to put their wants and needs first. And you need to give them convenience, because that's what they came in for. Don't try and sell them what you want to sell them. If you do, if you're a one and done, that's fine. I'm uh, hopefully going to speak at NADA, but my session is called How to Get a Stray Cat and Turn It Into a Loyal Puppy Dog. Yeah, we can all get that one mini deal off the internet, get that deal, get that stray cat, put that saucer of milk out, get the stray cat, but eventually we want that loyal puppy dog that sits in our arms, that we pet, that we love. Um, if you're not busy today, Make yourself busy. I always say busyness creates business. So follow up. Follow up with people who you talk to, emails that you had, people you talked to two months ago, ups you had over the weekend. Follow up with everybody in your database. Go to your CRM, go to your notes, however you do it, it's up to you. But talk to people. Get out there, talk to them. Hang the carrot out there. Create a genuine value. Hey, it's the last day of the month. My manager's great at putting deals together the last day of the month. If you come in here and you're serious, I've still got this vehicle or I've got a vehicle just like it or I've got one that just got marked down or they just came out with a new incentive, get them in there to see you. It's the last day of the month. It's busy. Busyness creates business. You know how it is when you're selling cars and there's nobody in the showroom and you could be giving a car away to a customer, $10,000 under cost. We're gonna think about it. We have to see the price isn't right. 
but that same vehicle, you're at sticker price, and they see people buying left and right, desks are filled, people are coming in and out of the showroom, the PA is going crazy, people getting paged. That's what you want to create. Today's your day. I know some of you are closing here soon, but today is the day. In fact, I think I put on the uh, on my last uh, thing on Conquer What You Chase Sales Pros that it's 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It's actually 1 p.m. Mountain Time where I'm at, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So a lot of you are closing down, but create that appointment. Create things like, hey, if we get your credit application, if your store allows, if we get that credit application called in, that way, if the deals get worse tomorrow, we can still, if you decide you want to do it, it doesn't commit you to anything, but we can still get you qualified for that deal. The deals, I haven't seen the deals this good before in a long time. I've never seen the deals this good. I've never seen lease payments this good. Get the customer excited. That is your job. Enthusiasm sells. My dad always taught me that. The number one thing in sales is enthusiasm. When you're enthusiastic, you get the customer excited. Remember, we're getting to the busy season. We're getting where we need to step our game up. We need to get the momentum going. It's like a train. That train starts out, then it just, you just hear it pounding, 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 picks up momentum, the torque's going, the horsepower's there. Get your torque, get your horsepower, get your momentum moving forward. It's your time, it's the busy season. Summer is the busiest months. May was always my busiest month, but I always had great Julys and great August. Even when we'd go vacation, I would always still have a killer July. And June's a good month too, so don't count June out. But always remember, where your focus goes, energy flows. So focus on what you want. Focus on the prize. Focus on what you want to accomplish. That's where you'll put your energy. We just got back into me and my wife, and we take my daughter, who's 10, and my son gets to play in the play area, but we go to the gym now. We have higher energy. We were in the pool for two or three hours yesterday. You can see the pool behind me here. We were in the pool two or three hours yesterday. Where focus goes, energy flows. We got back into working out. We have more energy. We're thinking sharper. We're thinking brighter. We've got better ideas. I'm doing better things for my clients. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is I had uh, Jake Davis asked, when you get that phone up and you just can't get them in, they're just starting to look, I'm just doing my preliminary research. Believe me, I sold cars in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There's like four universities, four hospitals. I dealt with more professors and doctors than you could shake a stick at. The first thing they would always do is, hmm, we're just here starting our initial research and we would just like some information from you and take a look at a few of the models, but we aren't doing anything until uh, May of 2019, but we just want to get a, a grasp of the market. So what you need to do, and same thing when you get that customer, start building a relationship over the phone. Hey sir, I understand. My wife always gives me a hard time. I always give my wife a hard time. She's too diligent of a shopper. She puts too much energy in it, or she makes too quick of a decision, or I make too quick of a decision. Spin it into reality. Make it reality, but use a story, allegory, one of the 12 A's. Stories sell. People want to hear a story that relates to them. They want to hear a situation that somebody else had and they made a decision. And so empathize, get to their level. I understand, sir or ma'am, you just want information right now. And I'll give you all the information you want. Actually, you can probably find more information online, but now that we know are contacting each other, now that we have somewhat of a rapport, somewhat of a relationship, you have somebody who you can call on. So that's very good right there. One thing I can tell you, ma'am, is if you come into the dealership and see me, now when I was building that relationship, I was building that rapport, I asked him things like, oh, where do you live? Oh, cool, where do you work? Oh, how many kids do you have? So now I know where they work and they live. Your office is only five minutes away. If you could spare 15, 20 minutes on your lunch break, I could have this vehicle pulled up for you, and that way I could give you a proper demonstration and we could take it for a quick spin. Give them a reason to come in. Give them a value to come in. Get them excited about coming in. But you need to take the extra five minutes to build that relationship, always. Whenever you think you're done with the customer, take the extra five minutes. I know when I'd be super busy on days like today, and I appreciate you if you're watching and you're busy, but there will be the replay so you can watch that too. But at the end of the month, when I just kind of rush somebody off the phone, guess what? Those are the people who didn't call me back. Those are the people who didn't return my email. Those are the people who didn't make their appointments. But when I spent that extra five minutes with that person, and I truly empathized, and I created a common ground, I created a rapport, I created a relationship, those are the people that I sold because they felt indebted to me. And the more I got them to talk about themselves, the more they felt like they know me because I know a lot about them. And in that rapport, that relationship building process, 
I'm doing the needs and wants analysis. I'm figuring out really what convenience they're looking for. Is it to pack the whole family up and all the gear to go up north? Is it to get gas mileage? Is it to carpool? Is it to go off-roading? Find out what they really want, what convenience they're really searching for, what they really need. We need to do this. Um, another thing, and I forgot to tag Hunter, but talking about controlling a customer when you do the pencil, okay? So you do the first pencil and you guys hit them a little high or, or they were coming in on the 269 add on a new one, you flip them to a used one and you're hitting them at 419. Or you give them their trade appraisal. And I, I love everybody and believe me, I love it. Um, I dealt with a very intelligent and I, I dealt with all types of customers but a very intelligent customer that probably did 10 hours of research on their trade in. So I love when everybody's like, just hold their hold on their trade, hold on their trade, hold on their trade. In a perfect world, that sounds beautiful. But what we need to do is we need to show them reasons why their trade in is that value. Okay, some people do a walk around with the customer. Some people go on a test drive, which is very intelligent in the trade in with the customer, the car that the customer's actually trading in. And oh, so the, the this, Button doesn't work on the radio and the, the back window rolls down a little bit slow and oh there's this tear on the seat but you don't want to people are smart enough that you don't just want to bash down their trade because that's what they've been running their family around in um, I've worked I've been in the business 18 years I've been in those guys that uh, you know you pulled up in that sleigh with your family I mean think about saying that to a customer think about saying that to a customer you pulled up in that sleigh with your family you know I get the mentality and the mental warfare of trying to beat down their trade in. But if you just do subtle hints like, oh, okay, so there's this little tear here where you're gonna be getting that fixed, and then print off three or four different sources of what their trade's worth, and then print off the auction report of what you can buy them at, at the auction, and then show them a used car that you're looking for. Okay, sir, so great example right here. So, and I'm on trade-ins, but the same thing can be handled with the pencil in a, in a different way. Um, so, sir, so KBB is 12,000 on your trade-in. Good, good condition. We're at 10,500. Your vehicle's not in really good condition because we're going to need to put a set of tires on it. We're going to certify that vehicle. Our average cost for a certification through the company for the repairs that need to be done and for the marketing it's going to be about $1,500 is what it cost us to get the